Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CCSB exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to investigations in Domain 5 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the third of three videos for Domain 5. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are a little teeny tiny part of our complete CCSB masterclass. All right, let's talk about how we apply the principles and methods of forensic science to investigations. This is all about what an organization needs to do if, for example, they have detected a breach or had a whistleblower report something or visas called asking why some systems are leaking millions of customer credit card numbers. One of the most important first steps is securing the scene, establishing a perimeter to prevent unauthorized persons from entering the scene in order to avoid the loss or contamination of evidence. Securing the scene is paramount, as once evidence is contaminated, it cannot be decontaminated. Securing a digital crime scene is particularly challenging, as we want to preserve as much evidence as possible, but balance that against things like stopping an ongoing breach. Should a computer be unplugged from the network or even shut down? Doing so quickly could compromise the investigation, but doing so slowly could allow data to be leaked. Once we begin collecting evidence, there are a few principles, techniques, and sources that we should be aware of. There are numerous sources of evidence for an investigator. Oral or written statements are when witnesses tell an investigator that they witnessed or wrote something down. Documents are any notes, files, or the like that an investigator can find. Digital forensics is the scientific examination and analysis of data from storage media in such a way that the information can be used as potentially evidence in a court of law. As part of digital forensics, let's talk about snapshots. If there's been an incident that needs to be investigated, we can't just go to the cloud provider and ask them to hand over their physical hard drives for us to perform forensic analysis. Instead, what we might be able to do is to take a snapshot of the VM. And remember, snapshots are essentially copies of the VM frozen in time. Snapshots are super useful for digital forensics. One of the most challenging and important types of digital evidence is known as live evidence. This is any data stored in volatile memory within a system, places like RAM and the CPU's cache and registers. Recovering live evidence from a physical system requires specialized tools, and any live evidence is lost when a system is powered down. Recovering live evidence from a virtual machine is way easier. Just take a snapshot. As part of forensic analysis of an incident in the cloud, it may be possible to look at data from the cloud service provider, uh, such as configuration information, things like types of VMs, including CPU memory and storage resources, uh, which could help identify abnormal changes or provisioning. Network metadata, things like virtual private cloud configurations, subnets, routing tables, and network security group rules can indicate potential misconfigurations or on our authorized network changes. Identity and access management metadata. This is, can be useful to tell you things about permissions granted to users, roles, and groups. And there's even storage, container, or encryption metadata. So there's lots of different potential sources of metadata, information that can be very useful in an investigation. And basically, the cloud provider has a ton of information about how its environment is configured. And obviously, that data is very useful from an investigation's perspective. E-discovery, or electronic discovery, is the process of identifying, collecting, and producing electronically stored information for legal proceedings. An important international standard to remember related to e-discovery is ISO 27050. ISO 27050 is a set of standards that provides guidance and best practices for electronic discovery e-discovery covering the identification, collection, and preservation of this electronically stored information in legal contexts. Forensic investigations can be challenging in the cloud because you typically have much less control than in an on-premise environment. The support that you get from your cloud provider for your investigation will vary according to service model. Under the software as a service model, your options are extremely limited. You must in basically entirely rely on the cloud service provider if you want to perform any sort of forensic investigation as a customer. When it comes to platform as a services, you have a little more control as a customer. 
You have to obviously rely on the cloud service provider for the underlying infrastructure, but you're responsible for the application logging and any application code you deployed. So presuming you've built the appropriate capabilities into your application, you may have at least some data for your forensic investigations in platform as a service. Under infrastructure as a service, as a customer, you have the most control, the most ability to perform forensic investigations. So this is the service model where you also have, of course, the most responsibility. You can perform forensic investigations on your virtual systems, but you will need the cooperation of your cloud service provider to investigate the underlying infrastructure, things like the physical hardware and the physical network devices, or to get images of the provider's hard disks. So, a customer in infrastructure as a service has way more ability to perform forensics investigations in the cloud, but they're still heavily reliant on the cloud service provider. The chain of custody. You should associate the chain of custody with one word, control. The chain of custody is the process of documenting the complete journey of evidence during the life of the case, demonstrating control of the evidence from the moment it was collected to potentially years later when it's presented in a court of law, and thus the evidence has integrity. Uh, this leads us to the five rules of evidence that are required for evidence to be considered useful, admissible in an investigation. Authentic means that you can tie the evidence back to the scene. You can prove the evidence relates to the incident in a relevant way. Accurate equates to integrity. You can prove the evidence has integrity. Complete means you collect all the evidence, even exculpatory evidence, which might help clear a suspect. Convincing, the evidence must be convincing and reliable and explainable to a jury. Your evidence collection and analysis procedures must not cast doubt on the evidence authenticity and veracity, its degree of truth. And finally, you want your evidence to be admissible. This is the most basic rule. The evidence must be able to be used in the court of law or elsewhere. Okay, and the final part of any investigation is the extremely thorough documentation of evidence collected and preparing to present that evidence to the relevant stakeholders, a judge, jury, the opposition, regulators, investors, etc. And there you go. That is an overview of investigations within Domain 5, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam. Thank you.